Welcome to the Biz Life Podcast. I'm Donnie Bador, your host, and we have in studio today Aaron and Isaac Hale from White Horse Painting. Welcome, guys. Our, our in studio audience here are excited to see you. Yeah. All right. Yeah. 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 Absolutely. We're happy to be here. Yeah. yeah. Excellent. Well, thank y'all for uh, taking the time out of your day. I know y'all are busy with your business and stuff. And, uh, Man, I uh, really enjoy watching y'all's interaction as y'all do business and life together. Um, it uh, it reminds me a lot of my two sons, uh, mm-hmm. Landon and Jacob. You know, growing up and and now they're running the martial arts school and just yeah, just that dynamics of working with your brother. Yeah, yeah, it's right. definitely fun. Yeah, we enjoy it. We have a lot of good times out there, and yeah, it's able to bounce off each other. And like you know, he has better attributes than I do. It's really good. It's a good, yeah. good connection, good, good balance. Yeah. We uh, always make jokes. It's like we're married because like shared banking accounts and like shop together, <laughs> live together, yeah. does the laundry together, and all that kind of stuff. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we have a good time. It's fun. We spend a lot of time together. It's That's really, cool. It's really good. That's cool. Yeah. Um, well, I just wanted to uh, again introduce y'all and get get you know get into. Uh, a little bit of business with y'all but before we do that let's talk a little bit about you know your your business history and a little bit about yourself so uh, whoever wants to go first i'll let y'all arm wrestle i don't yeah. know who would win at that but yeah you can go first you start off. yeah well uh in terms of business it pretty much started with my dad's company about eight years ago he started white horse painting in okay. alito weatherford area and some of fort worth and uh in the early stages like we were still in school going to college and everything and then he graduated and went in to work with him and he was there for i don't know how many yeah years. i was so i graduated back in 2019 uh okay. and once i graduated i was looking at other jobs and my dad really wanted me to come help him grow his business so uh you know it only took me about two weeks to be like you know what? i'll go help my dad out instead of trying to do all these interviews and stuff so mm-hmm. i uh, ended up doing that did that for about two years and then I went and worked for a different company doing facility maintenance. I was doing overseeing about 45 creme de la creme daycares for a company called the Baron Companies. Okay. So I kind of got a foothold in that where if, let's say something happened on, you know, this place flooded, I'd come in and get someone, uh, the right trades to come in and fix it. Kind of anything AC, HVAC. So I kind of got my hands in everything. A general contractor Exa- type of work. Yeah, yeah. yeah exactly. Okay. Just make sure the buildings were up to par for the daycare. Yeah. Uh, then after that, I went back to work out our work with uh, our father, and that's when about Aaron came on board as well. Yeah. Okay, did that for a year, and then kind of things happened. And we yeah, were, well, I uh, pretty much knew I was going to join the family company. Like after probably my sophomore year of college, I was like looking at all these internships and everything, and I saw Isaac working with them, and I was like, man, we could really grow this with all the business classes I was taking, which. Granted, college, like, I learned some stuff, but, like, yeah. not nearly as much as I've learned since I've been out. Right. Um, so as soon as I graduated, I went and started working with a family company. And then uh, about December of 2022, um, my dad kind of wanted to downsize, cut back on his overhead, like, get rid of the brick-and-mortar building mm. and kind of part ways. So we're like, okay, that's fine. So we looked for jobs for a while, and that was a pain in the butt. Like, I hated mm. interviewing. I hated searching for all these jobs, things that, like, nine to five and work up the ladder type thing. And that's yeah. not really like how I'm geared. Um, so we were living together at another apartment at the time. And we, after doing that for like four to six months, I'm yeah. not sure exactly how long, but uh, yeah. we decided, why don't we try to start our own thing? We even looked into doing a like trash. Yeah. Business. We looked into a trash business, which yeah. actually okay. eventually we might start that thing up too. Yeah. Hey, one man's trash is another man's treasure. <laughs> exactly. right? yeah. It's more like a business to haul off trash from apartment complexes. Okay. There's a little niche for it that I eventually want to start something like, like that. Trash valet, which I did okay. do that in college where I was just like a grunt worker, literally sprinting around an apartment complex, throwing trash bags in this bin and hauling it off. Yeah. Um, and so we were looking at that and then we we're like, well, why don't we just stick to what we know? Yeah, because he worked with our dad for a while, kind of knew the bidding process and everything. And I worked mm-hmm. for about six months before we parted ways. And I would primarily was working on the commercial side, like computers and spreadsheets and uh, takeoff software and all that kind of stuff. So okay. I've learned a lot of the in-person bidding through Isaac since we started. Yeah. But uh, yeah, we kind of 
branched off and we're like, let's do our own thing. DFW, talk to her dad, kind of discuss. We're still getting like exact contracts into work and like we're just working in good faith right now. I mean, like father son relationship, like we're not yeah. too worried about it. Sure. Um, so as that comes, we're going to develop it and kind of grow slow and see each step as it comes and develop mm. it at that pace. But, That's cool. Yeah. That's yeah. cool. You covered pretty much all the points about, yeah. you know, how we got started and all that. And now we're kind of where we're at now. So. Hmm. We're very blessed. We like it. We enjoy it. We're able to have some freedom and also be able to work a lot and be able to, yeah. you know, kind of see the benefits of owning your own company. So yeah. it's been great. It's been great. Uh, married kids or? No. Uh, no. He has a girlfriend. Yeah. It's very kind of switched. Yeah. Okay. I used to always have the girlfriend and now I'm single and now he has the girlfriend. So it's okay. kind of. So, hey, all you ladies out there watching. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Isaac. Here we go. Right here. Right here. <laughs> 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 Love it. All right. Uh, hey. Rangers fan, I assume. Big Rangers fan, yeah, yeah they're absolutely. doing good. Yeah, we went. We were able to go to opening day. We had oh, a, cool. We have a really good uh, Sherman Williams rep that you know mm. offered us to go up there, go to hang out for a tailgate, hang out, go watch the game. It was it was awesome. Sweet, really good to see them. You know, right after they won the World Series, so yeah. it, was, it was really great. It was fun. Yeah, good time. That is cool. Yeah, but uh, kind of about personal life. Like yeah. I think that like how it interprets in the business is like. We both played sports growing up. Like I played football, he played baseball. Okay. And uh, just the competitive nature of it, like always, whether you were a starter or not, like fighting for the starting spot. And then once yeah. you were starting, it's like maintaining that spot mm -hmm. and competing against other people on the field. Like football was like, I'm going to make sure that everybody knows. Is just high school or college too? Or College too, for both okay. of us. For both, okay. Yeah. Yeah. What college did y'all go to? I went to Trinity University. Okay. I played, I was at Arkansas Tech University. Okay. Up in Russellville, Arkansas. It's a nice. good little place. I love it. So, did y'all live up there? And I lived there for four years. So okay. While well, you were in college. Yeah, well, I moved in college, up there. And, okay. Exactly. And then mm -hmm. Trinity's in San Antonio. So, I was okay. there for four years. And you just moved down there. Yeah. Went off yeah. to college, come back, and a dad and family's always lived in the DFW area? Or? Yeah, they've yep. always kind of lived in the Lido area. Okay. And then now, I mean, yeah, they've lived there for a long yeah, time. Yeah, they've now. seen it growing then. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Raised, yeah. yeah. I remember when it was just two roads and a Sonic and the Bearcat Cafe, and that was about it. Yeah. And now it's there's everything. There's a Taco Bell. There's everything out there. Mm -hmm. So it's been pretty crazy growing. That is crazy. I remember you're you know whenever you have those I remember moments, right? Uh, so we lived on the north side of Fort Worth in Watauga. Okay. Uh, yeah. Many years ago, grew up there, and Denton Highway was a dirt road. Oh wow! Really? Yeah. It's yeah. not anymore. <laughs> not anymore. <laughs> no, it hadn't been for a long time, <laughs> yeah, right? That is true. So anyway, yeah. well, that's cool. Uh, so d is there a, is there a moment uh, that, and, and y'all can both answer or whatever, but was there a moment that you're like, you know what? I, I want to be in the family business or I want to be in business and not work for someone or was there any kind of pivotal moment that you remember on that? Or is it just something that sort of just graduated into you? Well, that's a really good question, actually, because for me, I always knew I wanted to work for myself. Okay. I um, always had the entrepreneurship mind, mm. really knew that I would wanted to be my own boss, this and that. Um, but for me is when I ventured off for that year, I guess it was like a year, maybe maybe 11 months or so. Um, when I ventured off, I really realized I wanted to do what I'm doing now, mm. be my own boss, not have to, you know, kind of be able to coordinate, make my own schedule. That's always a plus, but also just the benefits of the harder you work, you really see the outcome. Mm. When you're working for a corporation or even a small business, you're not the top guy. You work all this time. You work, put so much effort into something. You see little benefits. So yeah. when it's uh, when it's just yourself and your brother, someone you trust, especially, you can really see the benefits. And just especially over this past year, we'll be in business for a whole year in May, and it's it's nice. astronomically different. And the benefits and how much we've grown is yeah. pretty crazy. So, so this May will be one year. One year. Yeah. One nice. year for us. Yeah. For y'all. Yeah. yeah. White horse painting with your dad started. Ah, man, I don't know how many years. I want to say it's eight or nine. Eight I always get yeah. I don't know, 100%. Eight. Yeah. yeah. That's cool. Yeah. But yeah. It's been good. But yeah, that's nice. what, that's kind of when I really noticed yeah. the true, when I really wanted to work for myself, really, yeah. was that transition. That's cool. Yeah. For me, it's kind of the same thing about like just – seeing how much effort you put in is how much you get out of it. Mm. Like, like I know working for somebody and I'd see friends graduate before me whenever I was in college to go off and work nine to five, like super sm smarter than me, like way smarter engineers and stuff. Mm -hmm. Then we'll work nine to five. It's great jobs, great benefits and everything, but sure. it's like moving up the rungs of a ladder. And it's like, you're kind of set at that pace and there's a cap on it. 
Whereas like, I don't want to cap on what I can do, you yeah. know, like I want it to be purely based off my effort. If I'm a bum, don't do anything, then I'm not going to get anything. Right. And then if I'm busting my butt every day, yeah. making something happen, then I want to see my, the fruits of my labor. You think that was bred into you some way upbringing or? Yeah, or do you absolutely. Think that's yeah. yeah. Our, absolutely. Our dad has always sought to own his own business. When we were young, mm -hmm. he owned a, a, like mail order advertising. He did direct mail. Direct mail. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. He had magazines. Uh, he did all that stuff. Kind of, you know, did you ever get into Stroll Ridgely or any of those? Remember that? Mm. Did you do any of that? Mm -mm. This is, he used to do the exact same thing. Okay. Just micro um, direct mail or advertisement for marketing, really. Yeah. Micro marketing for neighborhoods. Stuff. Okay. So yeah. That's what he did. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. But, and it's uh, really the sales mindset. He's like, incredible salesman and not that's not just hearing from him i've talked to some of his buddies that he's been around and yep. they always tell me like do you realize how good of a salesman your dad is and everything right. and it's like being able to see like the just whenever he was working for companies the commission checks he got from busting his butt and going out there sure that type of thing so uh yeah and i i guess it's kind of been bred into us is what i'm saying like yes <laughs> yeah yeah for so, sure i think it's seen it my whole life and even mm -hmm. my mom too she was always a hard worker and stuff like that and so she kind of bred it into us too because her dad i remember our granddad he would be making us mow the lawn when we we're 11 years old you know yeah. little things like it's that a good granddad yeah, exactly yeah. as soon exactly. as i was able to look over the handlebars of the mower i was pushing that yeah, yeah that was the go find me back whenever i was yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. go find me there it is yeah there's a lot more i think you gotta buy your own gas by the way yeah don't use mine <laughs> <laughs> okay I think that's a lot of yeah. actually where it starts for people. I think entrepreneurship is where it comes to physical labor. Yeah. I mean, we grew up doing all sorts of physical labor when it came mm -hmm. to just mowing lawns, helping people with this and that. And now I feel like every time someone's moving out of an apartment, they give us a call because they know we have a trailer and we can go help them out. <laughs> I had a buddy in Oklahoma actually yeah. call me. He's like, hey, like, I know you have a truck and a trailer. Can you come help me move from Oklahoma to the Frisco area? I was like, Hi, let me, you know what? Honestly, I might help you out because yeah. I hate moving. So I'll help you out and make it a little easier for you. There you go. But anyways, I think it's kind of where it starts too. Yeah. I remember uh, when we were young, first started mowing. It would take two of us to crank the mower. One of us would hold it up, <laughs> yanking it as hard as they can. Right. Yeah, yeah. For sure. But uh, yeah, it definitely comes from that. Like just we had the earn our room and board growing up we weren't just like playing yeah. video games we were yeah. doing yard work oh, we played yeah. plenty of video games I yeah. think it's oh it came later we all, you know? right. we all <laughs> yeah. have right yeah. um well you know i remember because y'all are let's see if i remember right 22 25 what's 25 27 yeah i'm 27 oh, okay yeah there you go older yeah. than i thought yeah um <laughs> whenever i was in my 20s working for an rv dealership uh customer came in he had some issues or whatever with his rv and i was a service manager Mm -hmm. And uh, he's like, you know, I want to talk to the boss. And I got, you know, bought this brand new RV and it's breaking down or whatever. And he needs to want to fix it. And I said, well, I can help you. And he's like, no, nah, I need to talk to the boss. You know, this is a very serious matter. Mm -hmm. And I was like, well, I'm, I am the boss. And uh, if you need anything fixed, I can help you. And he's like, no, you're too young. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And uh, I was like, well, I'll tell you what. Yes, I am young. I think I was 21 at the time. Yeah. I said, but if you want something done, I promise you I can get it done. And right. so... He, he allowed me to do it and everything. Have you had any kind of uh, youthful, youth-related challenges that you've come up with or, or have had to face? Because uh, you're pretty young as far yeah. as entrepreneurs. Yeah, you we, know? I would say that I've gotten a lot when I go to give bids to people that were young and this and okay. how long you've been doing Because, I mean, I've only been doing this for four years. So yeah. some people want someone that's more of a veteran. But other than that, I mean – I, to be completely honest, I think it benefits us Yeah, because a lot of people want to see young people mm -hmm. being a go-getter. And a lot of people, when I go talk to them, how professional I am and yeah. the knowledge that I give them, they're very, I think, uh, intrigued with that. And mm -hmm. it kind of helps me on the cell being younger. Yeah. Uh, but so far as challenges, there's been minimal for real. There's yeah. nothing, nothing too, too crazy. From my I experience, think, uh, it could be different from here. Yeah, I think on the commercial side of things, definitely like people look at you as younger and, oh, he doesn't know what he's talking about and try mm -hmm. to get things for free out of you, thinking mm -hmm. you don't know. And uh, yeah, I've kind of had to, I've heard had my learning experiences for sure. Of course, like, we all do, right? Growing up. And yeah. I do try to come from it from like a not a know-it-all perspective, but kind of a fake it till you make it. Like if I don't know anything or something I know I don't know, I'll be honest. I'll be like, I don't know. Let me get back to you. Yeah. Um, but in terms of like presenting yourself with confidence, like, okay, I know I can get this done. Like, right. trust me, I got it. Like fake it till you make it. And eventually you will know to that extent, mm -hmm. like, 
like present yourself with integrity, but also like confidence in a way, mm-hmm. if that makes sense. I'm no, no, it totally makes yeah. sense. And I mean, I had, I've used y'all before yeah. in, in uh, my son's home and, you know, and I'll tell you, whenever I got there and uh, my wife was like, Hey, we need to go check on that house. You know, we got it painted and everything. It's like, oh, okay, let's totally forgot about it. Let's go check it out. And I really thought y'all had replaced the doors. I mean, cause they looked perfectly flawless. And I was like, Holy crud. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I've never, I've painted before, right? And I guess uh, sometimes, you know, uh, people may have the mindset that it's just paint, right? But it's a big difference whenever you paint it yourself or you have someone that's like really professional do it. And I was blown away with it. I good. really was. That's good feedback. Like, I appreciate yeah. that. Yeah. Which uh, the devil's They'll definitely in the details with painting. Like if you yeah. have a crew come in and they're putting uh, the drop cost down, not putting paper and plastic tape everywhere and like covering every surface that's not being painted. Mm-hmm. That's already a red flag on that's me. You got. <laughs> <laughs> that's me. That's yeah. You. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The, the painting with us uh, also comes down to our crews. We're very, yeah. very blessed to be able to have the guys that work for us and we take yeah. care of them. I mean, yeah. Yeah. we make sure they make good money and we, we make sure to keep them around and keep them busy. That's, that's what they really like a lot. And uh, mm-hmm. we have great relationships with our crews. They really enjoy us. They invite us over to hang out, cook out, you know, drink a beer with them stuff so yeah sure it's really uh we really try to take care of our crews that's where it kind of comes down to where i think we're try to be different than most people is we really care about yeah. our people and our company and where it's going and, and everyone involved you know nice so that's where it comes up about too yeah yeah it's, that's a that's a big deal huge yeah, absolutely. It's a big big deal hey for those that are watching so i have aaron and isaac hill um they are i'd say they're young entrepreneurs just because they're a lot younger than me um but you know here's here's what i want you to do if you know someone that's uh, maybe a young aspiring entrepreneur someone young in business that's you know trying to make their own path share this out to them uh tag them in this um give us a like subscribe we'd really appreciate that um so what would y'all say let's go back to you know, maybe that young entrepreneur or, you know, I think of my boys, right? Mm-hmm. They're, they're a couple of years younger than each of y'all. Um, what are some advice that you would give someone that's either fresh out of college or maybe they didn't go to college, but they're college age, 20, 21, 22, something like that, right? What kind of advice would you give them, especially if they're aspiring to own their own business? The main thing I would say is take action. Don't, mm sit around and wait for something to land on your doorstep. Mm-hmm. If you have an idea, you don't know if it's going to work until you actually like pursue it and kind of at least do some market researching, like go ask some people like, Hey, would you pay for this? Like at what price point and kind of get some ideas in your head to get a starting point for bidding or whatever it might be that you're doing. Um, mm-hmm. But yeah, just take action. Don't sit around and wait for it to come for you because mm-hmm. I like things that. aren't going to happen. Grab the bull by way. the horns yeah. go with it. Yes. I like to say if it's up to me, if it's up, to, if it's going to be, it's up to me. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. And I love that. Yeah. Thank you. I would completely agree. Mine's kind of tag team or kind of goes off what Aaron said, yeah. uh, is be a risk taker because it okay. is a big risk. Yeah. And that's kind of one of the big things for me and Aaron. We're like, we need to, we're at the point where like, we need to start making some money. We need to start getting this income coming in. Yeah. And we're like, what are we going to do? So you take a risk. I mean, you got to invest the money you have and then hopefully sometimes other people's money. Yeah. Sometimes yeah, other people's go. money. Yeah. So that can be a big risk, but I mean, high risk, high reward. So Mm -hmm. I think that's the biggest thing is a lot of people are comfortable in their nine to five job. They get their money, they get all their bills paid, they live a little extra, go on vacation, and they're happy with it, which I don't think it's a good thing to be complacent. I Mm -hmm. think you should be a go-getter, go out there, you know, strive for the best thing you can be, the best person you can be too. Yeah. So. Take your, be a risk taker. And I'm, you know, are both pretty, we're risk takers, you know, we, yeah. we, we enjoyed in the risk and, uh, gotta be wise, but still be a risk taker. What yeah. does that look like for y'all taking risk? You know, cause every, that's, that yeah. could be different for other people, right? That what is, what does that look like when you say um, take risk? That's a really good well, question. I'd say it's like in our business specifically, it's like making the purchases that like you don't necessarily have the consistent overhead amount for, but just have faith that it's going to work out. Like mm. I don't stress over the big stuff majority of the time. Like if we have a new marketing, uh, marketing, uh, strategy, mm-hmm. it's going to cost more money. It's like, yeah. okay, we can hold on. I know we have the money now, but if it doesn't come in, then okay. And that's another thing going back is like, if you do have small setbacks, don't just like pout and like get discouraged. Like you got to like get back on the horse and keep yeah. going. Cause you will have setbacks. That's almost guaranteed starting out of business. There's yeah. going to be, something that like discourages you or 
pushes you a step back sometimes. Sure. But as long as you're taking the like two steps forward, that's going to keep yeah. you going. But um, yeah, just like those purchases that are tough to make in terms yeah. of the risks. Okay. Um, yeah. And putting yourself out there, putting yourself in uncomfortable situations, mm. like there's fear of, uh, fear of looking like you don't belong the whole what's the thing called where it's like imposter syndrome oh, oh, okay yeah. imposter yeah. syndrome no, imposter i would have no way i would have remembered yeah. that. i don't yeah <laughs> um no it's a real deal i yeah, mean you know, some people uh, they they think that it's like hey i can't i can't be someone who i'm not yeah but i mean you, you have to put get out of your comfort zone of yeah. some point right yeah yeah because you're not going to become that person unless you do take that step. So yeah, everyone's an imposter at some point, you know. Yeah. So true story. Get comfortable in that, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I would agree with Aaron on that too. Um, but as far as risks, I agree with the financial risks. You, I think that's always a factor. But also being a go getter and putting yourself in uncomfortable situations. Mm. For me, I have a hard time shutting my brain off when it comes to business. I'll be going out, me and my brother will be glad I'm not the only one. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. I'll be just having a social event. Me and Aaron will be, you know, having a beer or so and this I'll be talking to the guy at the bar and next thing I know I'll get his business card and then in a week or two he reaches out and yeah. says, Hey, here's a uh, here's a job for you. That happened to me the other day. I uh, was at Joe T's and me and my buddy, he knew one of the waitresses and she like is over all the schools doing the scoreboards. Oh, okay. And so I she reached out to me to for a bid and mm -hmm. I gave her a bid. So I mean it's little yeah. things like that that can go into like the social risk. The social risk, like, you know, like yeah. go into that store and maybe you don't get a business or get a deal of any sort. But you go in there and make a connection, and they'll remember that and give you a call. Yeah. So I think that's a big thing. Go in your comfort zone, kind of all the same, all ties in together. Yeah. Um, I forget what episode it was. I was talking to the president of Fully Promoted, and uh, his his brother. So there's three three brothers in the business, and one of the brothers, the dad, took um, out on a, a marketing journey, and uh, basically pulled up into a parking lot said, hey, I want you to go talk to some people about signs. And uh, and he shut the door and drove off. Mm. Yeah. He sort of just left him out there, you know, talk yeah. about, you know, social risk and yeah. and that awkwardness and imposter syndrome, you know. And yeah. and sometimes you got to do it. Always, yeah. uh, my dad actually always says that the worst thing I can say is no. Right. So, yeah. I mean, there's nothing that's going to come of it. True story. Other than yeah. your pride. <laughs> yeah, your pride. Your pride yeah. might get hurt. That'd, but, that'd grow bad. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that'd buff out. <laughs> <laughs> buff out, yeah. Um, okay, so let's talk about maybe balancing business and personal growth. Okay. Right? So I'm I'm uh, I'm I'm one that really uh, focuses on, like, being a lifelong learner, mm -hmm. uh, especially being older, almost, almost getting close to 50, right? And so I, I definitely love to be a lifelong learner. Um, how do you balance that, uh, you know, business and personal growth um, in your life, your personal life? Um, what are some things that you do? So I think it kind of all can tie in together. Like as you grow as a person, it's going to help you in your business as well. Mm -hmm. But uh, we talked about this at um, happy hour from not too long ago about for me recently, like the main thing that I've seen in my personal growth is my relationship with God, like getting into the word and like just seeing my like spirit be at peace and being able to move forward with peace and know that regardless of what I'm doing, like God's got me, like this isn't the end all be all like earth, yeah. like money, business. It's not yeah. the end all be all. There's a higher goal than that. Um, so that gives me peace. And then that translates into business, like, walking forward in that, knowing that whatever happens is going to be fine. And then also just in like fitness and physical life, like knowing I got to take care of myself. Like yeah. That, that all for me ties in together. Yeah. Yeah. That's great. I mean, I completely piggyback off what you just said is uh, for us. We just really recent started, uh, recently started a, uh, a Bible study we have on Wednesday nights and okay. with a group of guys. So community is big. Yeah. And you have a group of, I think, what is it, eight guys now? Nine? Yeah. Eight or nine? Teeters between eight to like 12. Yeah. Nice. So we have a big community where we have group message, keep each other accountable, mm -hmm. celebrate each other's successes. When we were down, hey, man, I need prayer for this. Right. So community is real big. I think yeah. that's a big way to overcome that. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, that's pretty much it. Love it. Yeah. Um, any mentors that y'all might have? Yeah. Definitely. Uh, which like, obviously our dad, yeah, big mentor for us, like in terms of business and sales and extremely knowledgeable 
biblically too. Like anytime I have a Bible question, I'm like, hey, you know anything about this? Like, yeah. yeah. Actually, Proverbs first. This, that, like, <laughs> I'm, yeah. I swear he's a photographic memory when it yeah. comes to those things. He remembers yeah. a lot of history stuff too, just mm -hmm. random, like when this time period was this and that. And yeah. then when it comes to scripture too, he grew up in the church and grew up with a dad that really knew scripture. So yeah. he was kind of fed that way. Um, but definitely our dad's a big mentor. And really recently, there's been a lot of people in our networking group, B and I, shout out to y'all, yeah, yeah. that have been real good mentors, kind of not never haven't really sat down, but like when we go to the networking events and all that mm -hmm. stuff, really been able to feed our ones. Yeah, help us out. Like West Shannon, we need to meet with him about finances and stuff mm -hmm. and really get the nitty gritty stuff, you know, pushed away. We just got like I think a big thing in business, your accounting stuff, and we have had someone for that. So yeah. helped us really set up things for our future to be able to have a blueprint of how to do a successful company. Yeah. And then when we want to franchise out have that script for them right. and, hey this is how you do it this is by the book boom and yeah. you go from there so mentors really yeah i would say b and i has been huge and yeah. then our father and then i've had a few mentors my at last boss greg baron he's been a little bit of a mentor i used to sit in his office and talk to him i haven't met with him in a little bit i need to reach out to him again mm -hmm. but just people are successful yeah really just know what they're doing have a you know you know company or large company small company whatever it may be yeah yeah and Wait. uh i'd say that my schooling like put me in a lot of good connections with successful business owners that i was able to reach out to and since i'm an alumni same as them they're open mm. arms like willing to talk with me there's Love been it. a handful of people when i was in college that lived in san antonio that i was able to go to their house and they were all about just spending their time with me giving me all the wealth and knowledge that they have and then even in dallas there's some alumni that i've met up with and it's been a really beneficial like if i have a question i could call them up and yeah. they'll be like yeah this is what i think about that and just kind of taking all that in together from yeah. all the different sources i think it was uh west shannon was it west shannon no it was mike mike uh, dory mm -hmm. uh kitchen tuna we were talking about having a council mm -hmm. having someone that um can watch out for your the spiritual aspect of you right mm -hmm. maybe yeah. a pastor or someone in that realm uh and then someone that that's a just a friend that wouldn't mind telling you, you know, that, hey, you got a booger in your nose. Yeah. Right. right. <laughs> yeah. You know, because, uh, you know, a friend will tell you your breast stinks. Yeah. Everybody else sure. will let you walk around and yeah. they don't care. Right. <laughs> uh, but then also have someone that has some, uh, some really strong business knowledge. Right. And having that blend, I thought that was a good blend yeah. Uh, yeah. to suggest to people. So yeah. Yeah. I was curious if y'all had anything, uh, you know, set up like that or sounds like you do just different. Yeah, yeah, different areas and Nothing stuff. Nothing like so set in stone, but yeah, yeah, we definitely yeah. have people to reach out to. Yeah. It's very, it's, we've been blessed with the people. Like, God just put us in the right places. Like, being I, Aaron actually was going for a job interview during that six month period, and he met Price through that. And then oh, okay. that's been huge for our business where he's like, hey, come to BNI. Yeah. And then boom, it's grown from that. BNI has been great for us. It's really helped yeah. us, you know, make connections and grow. It's funny how some people look at BNI, right? Yeah. You'll hear, oh, that's a cult, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> You can't miss. Oh, you got to do this, right? Yeah. And, yeah. But you know what? My time's valuable. Yeah. yeah. Right. And, Absolutely. And I've been part of networking groups that just like come and go, and you know everybody's just there to pass yeah. out a card, and that's it, and mm -hmm. not really focused. And uh, it's like, man, when it comes to business, I want to grow. Yeah. And I'd yeah. like to grow as fast as I can. Yeah. Yeah. You know? Absolutely. Yeah. And uh, so I'd much rather rub shoulders with people that have that type of mindset. Yeah. So. Yeah. And I like the uh, whole. Uh, attendance thing it's a sense of accountability like yeah. there's been tuesday mornings where i'm like man i don't really want to go today right but it's like i only have two a year and then he makes every me six go. months <laughs> <laughs> no wonder yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. but uh yeah i mean it makes me go and every time i go i'm happy i went like it's always beneficial yeah but um there's always times where it's like oh, i don't know but um yeah that sense of accountability is important like a structured group like that yeah yeah what do you like most about the 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 bni group oh man really the people i mean i guess that's kind of cliche to say but the people and the camaraderie we have i feel like they're like almost i would invite them to my wedding if i was getting married you know like right. I'm, i feel close to all those people all right so we need someone <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna get you hooked up by the end of the but, show <laughs> yeah <laughs> eventually eventually but uh yeah i mean i think that the bni is really is what it's there for the networking yeah. part of it it's pretty uh it's in the it's in the pudding or is that what it says it's in the pie Proof is in the pudding. <laughs> yeah whatever yeah. it's right there with it but yeah, yeah. but um yeah i i enjoy it just like socializing like there's not many times throughout the week that i get to like go talk to people that i enjoy you know right it's like 
talking to customers, which I do enjoy customers often, but it's always professional, like trying to put my best foot forward, which I do with BNI, but it's more relaxed. Like people are on the same plane as me, business owners and everything and right. coming from the same place as I am. So it's like, I can relax a little bit and talk and the happy hours definitely help with that. Just mm -hmm. being able to chill out and yeah. be casual. That's yeah. cool. That's cool. Um, yeah. So we're, we're sort of getting close to the end of the episode. Mm -hmm. Uh, is there any, there has to be some kind of funny story or something. I mean, you're working with your brother, right? Oh, there has to be something, or even growing up, right? Oh, it's growing like, oh, up. Dear Lord, I got some stories. I could probably, there's so many stories between Aaron and I. I'm trying to think, okay, I got a funny one. All right. So, oh, no. yeah, I think Aaron's going to know exactly which one this is. is so, me and Aaron with the, with the big family, Laundry is a big thing. We have okay. two sisters, me and my brother, okay. mom, dad. Oh, I know this one. So, yeah. you know, like sometimes you're fighting, you need some clean socks. And, yeah. you know, you, you're not doing your, your mom, like, hey, do your own laundry. You're not doing it. So, there's a pair of clean socks I found. I'm like, all right, I'm going to, these are my socks I'm wearing today. Yeah. And Aaron apparently, like, you know, picked them out distinctly for folded them the night before, them night before. Put them in a the drawer. Those were my socks. So it's his socks. So this is probably the up. biggest fight we've ever <laughs> <done>. <laughs> like, like. So I get up and I'm getting ready, go shower, get ready for school and put on my socks. And I'm about to go out the door and Aaron's getting there ready. He's like, where are my socks? That's all I had them on. Mm. He's like, take them off. He's in front of the, he's in front of the door. He's like, take him off. I'm like, no, Aaron, I'm going to school. What are you doing? Dude? He's like, no, like, <laughs> let me go to school. Socks, your socks, bro. <laughs> Ended up just absolutely. We started getting knockout brawl. Knockout. Not really. <laughs> How old like, were you? Oh man, I was he probably was a senior. Oh okay, yeah, senior right. junior, and he was like, he uh, definitely has some freshman. fist power at the yeah. time. Yeah. We were we never hit each other in the face. We've no, done no. like body blows and all yeah, that, yeah, yeah. but we were wrestling, throwing each other around I at was the time, trying to get him a leg lock, take off the socks, trying to get an arm bars. <laughs> yeah. all that there stuff. you go. Yeah, yeah. I know I like you. Little, uh, <laughs> <laughs> but long story short, we get up, we're breathing heavy, like all right, all right, all right. Here's your socks. And then I'm sure I found a pair of socks real quick. Yeah. No, he but, left for school actually before that. Was it? You left for school after we got in a fight. He's like, I'm going to school. Left. He turns around, comes back, gives me my socks. We hug each other. We're like, I'm sorry. Uh, sorry, man. I'm <laughs> there you go. But anyways, but <laughs> that was probably, that's one of the funny stories. But that is hilarious. There's probably some now where we're older and stuff, playing golf and all that good stuff. But yeah, yeah that's, I mean, a, that's one that I remember. Endless, but, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> For yeah, sure. I see this guy way too much. Yeah. yeah. I mean, the only time I don't see him is I'm sleeping. I feel yeah. like, so like, we wake up, Aaron, you want coffee? Yep. Let's put it on the yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's been fun. So y'all roommates. Yeah. Yeah. Roommates. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Same yeah. with my boys. Yeah. 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 We love it. I mean, it's, yeah. I don't have to worry about nothing. I can, you know, if I need to take care of something or if he needs to take care of something, hey, Aaron, let, help me with dishes. I'll jump up. Right. So it's, yeah. it's nice. It's real, real good dynamic. That's cool that you all have that relationship. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Very blessed. I love my yeah. brother very, very, very much. So yeah. Very love fortunate. you too. <laughs> <laughs> what about you? Uh, funny story, man. Got to give us some dirt, man. Yeah. I mean, there's, <laughs> uh, there's a handful of others. But. Anything that, that's not exposing you to. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. So it's, a, it's, we're at the later part of the podcast. So there's like 12 people that'll watch us, you know, one's my wife. So yeah, no, I'm yeah. just kidding. <laughs> there, there's plenty. Yeah. Oh man. I know there's something to do with girls or something. I know. That's what I was saying. There, there's like some PG and there's some other, I'm trying to think. Yeah, I would definitely keep it PG. Yeah. yeah. PG. So my wife is a twin. Oh, yeah. 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 And uh, met in 11th grade. Identical twin. Oh, man. oh wow. Yeah. Yeah. We won't go there. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Luckily, sure they, never, they never tricked us <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Tricked me or anything like that. But yeah, yeah. there was a, a late night hand slap on the face. So, oh, yeah. 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 Just once. <laughs> yeah. Anyway. <laughs> Funny, but yeah. Yeah. Well, cool, man. Um, well, again, I appreciate y'all being on here. Um, so tell us a little bit more about your business, right? Mm -hmm. What all do you do? Okay. So I always say in B and I, if it doesn't move, we'll paint it. Okay. You know, and if it's not living, yeah. 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 Uh, <laughs> but um, any kind of substrate that takes paint, we'll paint it like baseboards, walls, cabinets, uh, cabinets. We love cabinets. We're really good at that. Okay. Um, that's kind of now, staining we, as well, or we do, do staining. Paint? Okay. Yeah. yeah. Staining. Stain and paint. Okay. Um, what about like 
doors yeah like doors, a front door refinished yeah. front doors and we mm. make that look real, real good what about a door that has a lot of dog scratches on the inside yeah we can yeah. make that look real good well yeah. it depends if you're wanting to stain it maybe not but painting it we can do that uh yeah. staining it does, yeah, if those scratches are to... deep it's real hard to like get all that out but you yeah can, you can make it look decent probably make it look better than it does oh, yeah sure. okay definitely. i know Absolutely. i have a friend yeah. that has a dog that has uh, scratched the door so yeah, yeah. we can definitely fix yeah. all things but when yeah. it comes to yeah drywall painting yeah. wall ceilings trim like if there's rotten wood on the exterior on the fascia or soffit or anything like that we can repair that mm -hmm. um uh, you do popcorn insulation. ceiling removal. Yeah. I hate that stuff. Why? Oh, I don't Why? Know. I don't Let's know. talk about this for a moment. Okay. Popcorn ceiling. Who invented it? And are they still alive? <laughs> Who knows? Or are they should I be in jail. jail? They should be in jail. It's, uh, I don't know. I, it used to be a big thing back yeah, in the, the 80s day. or whatever. And now yeah. it's just uh, everyone be. goes to the flat ceiling or they have a little bit of orange pill or a light texture on the ceiling. So much yeah. better. It looks and it's a lot a cleaner. It's pain to do those jobs. Yeah. Our crews, to scrape them. And, yeah. I yeah. just hate that. Yeah. It's Actually, a lot of, I do have a funny story about uh, when we first started the company. It was our very first job. Okay. Um, and we didn't have a crew that wanted oh, to do this yeah. one job. This is... It was a medical building, and the beams under the building were rusted. Okay. So they hired us to go under there and do a chem chromic primer on all the beams, which is a rust inhibiting primer. Okay. And uh, so it was just me and Isaac and one buddy that were like, okay, we'll just do it ourselves. Mm -hmm. And this crawl space, like you could barely get on your knees. It was like about this tall, like right above the table. Yeah. Oh, wow. And so it was a small space. And uh, this rust inhibiting primer is like a strong, potent smell. Like it's like real chemical. And um, so we went down there with M95 masks on. Okay. Um, and we were like about an hour into painting and we realized we were talking to each other, arguing more than we were painting. Laughing. Too. Laughing. <laughs> and we're like, what's going on? I'm like, I think I'm high. Yeah. <laughs> and so we crawled out and like once we got out of the opening of the little manhole, we're like, oh my goodness, like I do not feel you're like, like you're like, floating. It was, it was a weird, it was, it was, it was I don't terrible. Understand people that do that for fun. It was terrible. <laughs> no, yeah. yeah. Don't it have was, paint. It's yeah. terrible. Yeah. It was like you had no sense of time and everything. So we went and bought some uh respirators, mm. went back down there. We're down there for about four hours, but we didn't change the filters on the respirator. So it happened again. We were down oh. there and realized we we're arguing, laughing, talking more than we were paying. We're like, we gotta get out of here. <laughs> yeah. So that was a brutal experience. But looking back, hopefully I didn't lose too many brain cells. But <laughs> it was yeah. it was kind of funny looking back on it. Yeah, one of those times. Our so. first job is white horse painting DFW. So, <laughs> yeah. 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 It was a experience. But I actually no learned something new about those things. Once you open those packs. You have like I think it's fourteen or eight hours of life that those on filters the work. Filters. Yeah. Oh, okay. That's I cool. found that out the other day. Actually, I was reading mm -hmm. the specs on it. I was like, I wonder. No, this one with the little canister. That yeah, the can, canisters. Yeah, no matter yeah. what, if you use okay. it or don't, if once that it's opened, yeah, you have like fourteen or eight hours to hmm. use it. So. Yeah. Now I know. <laughs> yeah. There you go. And a fan probably would have been good. A fan uh, would have been great. There's yeah. no ventilation, nothing, no, no air coming in or out. Down, so, yeah. 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 That was a we learned. Now we, now now we know why our crews didn't want to do it. Yeah, yeah. no kidding, right? Yeah. Exactly. I guess, would they have uh, some kind of ventilation tube that would bring fresh air to you type yeah. of thing? And probably yeah. would, uh, would If you just had a so. way to like, because for every action, they're opposite and equal reaction. So if you had air coming in, that air would be going out. Yeah. So yeah. with that going on, you know. There's if we had one. some system that was pumping air in, the air would be escaping too, but right. it was yeah. hard to figure out. Yeah. But that was Probably hooked experience. up a fan too. Yeah. We've been fine. No, <laughs> we're, we're just trying to get that thing done. Yeah, yeah. for sure. <laughs> had an episode like that in uh, junior high. We were painting, uh, it was in shop class, and we were painting the uh, instructor's uh, or the teacher's uh, trailer. Yeah. Krylon paint. Oh yeah. Oh, Doors yeah. were down and he was like, Hey, y'all paint this and I'm, I'm gonna go to the principal's office. I'll be back in about twenty, thirty minutes and mm -hmm. comes back and there's a bunch of seven year old or seventh graders in there just <laughs> cracking up and laughing. And, oh yeah. And he's like, Oh my gosh, big <laughs> fall comes out of the door. <laughs> yeah. Open up the garage door. Yeah, it was <laughs> gotta get some airflow. Yeah, for yeah, sure. That was uh so how does someone get a hold of you? What's the best way if someone is interested, they have maybe a house that needs to be do y'all do commercial too? We or do commercial. Yes. Okay. We really commercial. just starting to get in that space and we really want to hone in on a commercial yeah but yeah. the best way to get a hold of us probably would be our website okay. it's www.whitehorsepainting.com okay yeah. and if you go on there there's two options there's one for the dfw which is us and then my father as well who's out west so you can see the yeah. options go on there got it phone numbers on there our cell phones are on there so get a hold okay. of us anytime you want but yeah calling is we always answer our phones we're yeah. always around our phones so if 
someone calls us, we answer, unless it's spam risk, which I get yeah. about 100 of those a day. Yeah, no kidding. But yeah, I still answer them just hoping. It's a, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Same too. And, yeah. and sometimes it is, you know, yeah. I answer it and it's like, oh, yeah, I need this. Or, it's okay. yeah. I <laughs> Crazy. almost answered one and said, leave me alone. And I was like, wait, maybe I should actually listen. And it was <laughs> like, actually. Hey, real quick, here's a story. So my wife and I were just married and uh, we were eating dinner, six o'clock or whatever. And uh, I don't even think we had kids at the time. And someone had called and I was, you know, we didn't have spam ricks at the, you know, didn't even have cell phones back then. Right. And uh, it was, uh, you know, someone telemarketer or whatever. So I hang up on them and next day they call back. Third day, it rings again, about the same time, six o'clock. I pick it up and I'm like, look, I don't want your product. Leave me alone. I'm tired of you calling me. And uh, you hear this old, sweet old man on the other line, uh, Brother Donnie. This is Brother Boyd from the church. <laughs> I was like, oh, sorry about that, sir. He's like, oh, they get, they annoy me too. That's like, so oh my funny. gosh. Yeah. yeah, we ordered caller ID right after that. Yeah, for sure. That's well, funny. thank you all so much for being on here. I appreciate uh, it. Thanks for having man, us. Man, I uh, and just just really uh, appreciate it of uh, y'all's friendship and, and uh, man, just seeing y'all grow together, grow your business together. I think it's very inspiring and uh Man, thank you. Thanks a lot. Thank, thank you, you Donnie. Appreciate y'all. Appreciate it, yeah. yeah. Hey, so uh, again, if you will like, subscribe, share this out, uh, we'd really appreciate it. We will see you next time on The Biz Life. Talk to you soon. <laughs>